what does the Bible teach about business? That's what we'll uncover together on the Business in His Image podcast. This show explores strategies from the Bible that will help you grow your business, strengthen your walk with Jesus, and help you reach your God-given potential as an entrepreneur. The Bible is filled with practical wisdom to help you live for God while using your gifts. Let's unpack what that means for you and how you can use biblical truths to build a thriving business that honors Christ. Now it's time to dive in. Today on the show, I am sharing three really surprising lessons that I learned in faith and business within the past year. And my hope is that this episode will be a blessing to you if you take hold of what I'm going to share today. I really think it's going to impact your life. I think one of the things that has really surprised me overall is how God will use certain things in your life to shape you spiritually that you would never expect, right? So I feel like through this business journey, God has just taught me so much about his character Whereas I would have never expected that, right? I would have never expected to learn so much about business from the Bible. I would have never expected to learn so much about God's character through learning about business and how he sees business, how he sees money and wealth and using that as a tool for kingdom work. It's really shifted my perspective of who God is, his character, and so many things. Now, the first thing that I'm going to share with you, the first lesson is about leadership. And that is that leadership is a servant role. Now, if you read the Bible, you probably may have known that. But for some reason, I don't think that it really clicked for me, right? When we talk about leadership from a business standpoint, we think of being in charge, being your own boss, telling people what to do, right? But God showed me that that's actually not leadership at all. Leadership is not telling people what to do. It's showing people what to do with the way that you live your life and setting the example. And there is no greater example of that than Christ himself. When Jesus came to earth, God came to earth in the flesh, and he submitted to his own law. Everything that he tells us to do in his word, he followed that. He is the epitome of leadership. He says in Matthew 20, verse 28, even as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus came to serve, but he is the ultimate leader. He is the king of kings and lord of lords. Yet he came in the form of a servant and humbled himself because he wants us to follow that example. So as we step into a leadership role within our business, our lives, our ministries, our families, we have to remember that and keep that perspective. And for me personally, it humbles me because it shows me that leadership is sacrifice and it's hard. And it's definitely not as glamorous as we may have expected. So I don't know about you, but that was definitely a surprising lesson for me. Number two, the second lesson that God taught me is that I shouldn't fight against how God wired me to be. And so just being transparent, most of my life, I feel like there's been certain things about me, certain quirks that I never really understood. And within the past year, God has just been teaching me so much about myself how I'm wired, why I think the way I think, why I react the way I react, and just certain things about me that I really never quite understood or could wrap my mind around. And what God showed me is that he wired me that way. So one example I can give is that I did not understand my drive to do things, right? To accomplish things, to get things done. And sometimes I felt like, God, why don't, why is it so hard for me to just chill out? Why do I constantly feel like this pressing feeling to just get stuff done and and go, go, go? Why is it that I have so many ideas? It's like I have a hundred ideas a minute. I'm exaggerating, of course, but I feel like I have so many ideas and I'm like ready to implement all of them very frequently. And I just couldn't understand certain things about myself. My husband, on the other hand, he's a little bit more chill than I, very calculated. He likes to take his time, think things through. And I feel like I can really relate to Peter in the Bible because I think about Peter, he was an action taker and he did (laughs) embarrass himself a few times, but he was the one who stepped out of the boat in faith. And so I feel like I can relate to Peter a lot in that I am very action oriented and I just never understood that. There's been times where I feared being impulsive, feared being too hasty. And so I went in the opposite direction and just kind of like forced myself to wait, forced myself 
to not take action. And I just felt like I was fighting against myself with certain things. And so God showed me that sometimes our what we think is our greatest weakness is really rooted in a strength, but it becomes a weakness or shows up as a weakness when we don't have self-control, right? When we're not being spirit-led and just going all willy-nilly off of our feelings. So one of the things that God has really been helping me to do is to just stop fighting against myself, like pay attention to what I'm feeling, how I'm thinking, and start like trying to understand why am I thinking that? Why am I feeling that way? And I think that the more you are conforming to Christ, the more what you're thinking and feeling is going to be aligned with him and his desires for your life. So it's so much different than before coming to Christ or even maybe when I was like a very baby Christian. And of course, not everything I felt or thought was going to be in alignment with Christ. But I've been walking with God almost 10 years now. And it's just mind boggling, right? Like almost a decade of seeking the Lord and walking in fellowship with him. And I still have so far to go. Like none of us have arrived. Even Paul in the Bible said that he had not arrived. So I've definitely not arrived, but I see the progress and it's exciting. But I don't mean to go down a rabbit hole here. What I'm trying to say is that you should pay attention to the way that God wired you. You should seek him to learn how he created you and what your strengths are and start working with those strengths and how he created you and stop working against yourself. The third lesson I want to share with you today is that things almost always take longer than you planned or hoped for. And that's not always true, right? There are certain things in my life that I thought were going to take a really, really long time. For example, marriage. I had been praying for marriage and waiting on God to bring me my husband for what felt like a very long time. But I thought it was actually really far away because God kept showing me that I wasn't ready. And it was very discouraging. And I remember two specific times <laughs> that God showed me like I wasn't ready. It wasn't time. And I was very disappointed. And I got to the point where I thought marriage was so far away. I thought it was like going to be another five, at least five years, maybe even 10 years before it would happen. And this is going back to 2017. So not that long ago, maybe like six, seven years ago, it was before my husband and I even started dating. But saying all that to say that it was actually way closer than I thought, because uh, I think it was a few months after the second time that God told me I wasn't ready for marriage. I think that was January of 2017, the second time he told me that I wasn't ready for marriage. And then actually by that summer in June of 2017, my husband and I started dating. So that goes to show you that sometimes we expect things to take longer and they don't. And it's not that God can do things fast because he can. It's that sometimes we're just not in alignment. Sometimes we're just not ready. And it's like God is ready. He wants to pour out the blessing. He wants to answer the prayer, right? He wants to promote you. He wants to grow your business. He wants to do all the things and glorify his name and expand his kingdom through you. But we have to get in alignment. We have to do that inner work of submitting ourselves to the Lord, seeking his face and letting him prune us and circumcise our hearts to remove those things that are not of him. But I will give you this encouragement that yes, some things, some things will take longer than we hope for, but in the end, it will be worth it, right? So there may be times where you might have to be faithful for a long time before you see results. And I can definitely relate to that in my business. And although I've seen really, really amazing milestones in my business, and God has done some awesome stuff that I would have never dreamed of or expected, there's also things that didn't necessarily go at the pace that I was hoping for. There's things that God told me to do where I didn't necessarily see results right away. But let me give you this encouragement, friend. Just because you don't see the results right away doesn't mean that you're not on track. It doesn't mean that God isn't working in the background. It just means that you have to keep going. The Bible says, do not grow weary in well-doing. For at the right time, you will reap a harvest if you don't give up. It's not always easy to apply that, and I totally get it. But just know that I am right there with you. Your brothers and sisters in Christ are right there with you. This is something that all Christians go through. As we're wrapping up here, friend, I just want to give you this encouragement that God wants to be involved in your business. He wants to 
use it to not only bless you financially and bless others, but he also, I believe there's things that he can teach you through business about his character, about the way he views the world and other people that can really impact your life. So I just invite you to let him show you. I invite you to continue going deeper into his word, praying over your business, praying to God for wisdom, and even fasting. God is faithful and he will show up. Hey friend, I'm so glad you tuned into this episode. Really quick, if you are looking for faith-based business coaching to grow your online business, I want to tell you about the coaching program that was designed specifically for Christian entrepreneurs who want to grow their income without burning out and while keeping Jesus at the center of their business. You can go to thevirtualmama.com slash coaching to learn more about it. And I'll also drop that link in the show notes. Now that landing page is just for informational purposes only, and you will get an application there. Um, if you decide you want to move forward, you can apply, but there is no obligation. You don't have to submit your information or email or anything like that to be able to learn more about it, okay? I hope this episode blessed you. Remember to please rate and review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen so that more people can be blessed by this podcast. Until next time, bye. Thank you for listening to the Business in His Image podcast with me, your host, Joe Harris. If this show has blessed you, please share with a friend and subscribe so that you can be notified when we release new episodes. My prayer is that God will help you soak up every bit of what you've heard today and help you apply it to your business so that you can see results. I'll see you next time and may God bless you.